This video is made possible by Trends. Trends is the ultimate knowledge hub from the hustle. Basically, Trends is a networking community for entrepreneurs and budding entrepreneurs, no matter how big or small your idea. It's a place where you can connect and even workshop with investors and founders who share valuable insights to help you get your ideas off the ground. Trends brings together expert knowledge, data science, and investigative journalism to track new industries and likely trends. Hey, do you remember our video about the rise of Airbnb? Well, over on Trends, you can find in-depth trends analysis on building your own short-term rental side hustle, as well as detailed reports on loads of niche markets that could really help you to capitalize on your own ideas. Or maybe you're stuck for ideas or facing a career shift. Dive into Trends exclusive research for inspiration, like the Business Trends 2021 predictions or data on thousands of successful Kickstarter projects. We also like the live weekly lectures from founders who give practical tips about everything from local SEO to generating leads to getting the most out of YouTube. Hey, you're never too old to learn something new. Best of all, right now you can get your first seven days for just one Go to trends.co slash VP for your $1 seven day trial. Now, let's get into the video. Estonia is a country. And I know what you're thinking it might seem like a no brainer, but I'm sure many of you watching this video didn't know that there was a country called Estonia. Having said that, it is a shame because there is one country in the world that should be a role model, and that country is Estonia. First of all, and importantly for us on YouTube, it is the first state to recognize the internet as a basic right for all of its citizens. But today, we're going to focus on another very remarkable aspect of this country. Check this out. Estonia has the most competitive tax system in the OECD tax foundation. So now I know what you're thinking. Taxes? Competitive? Estonia must be a tax haven. Even better, it must be the top dog of tax havens. Next to it, the Cayman Islands must look like Sweden. Well, no, just calm down there. For example, the corporate income tax rate in Estonia is at 20%. The personal income tax rate is also 20%. It is clear that there are not tremendously high taxes, but with these rates, Estonia is no Mauritius, nor a Liechtenstein, nor even a Switzerland. However, despite not having particularly low taxes, Estonia has attracted a lot of companies and is the birthplace of startups like Skype, TransferWise, and Bolt. In fact, they have a very original policy for attracting companies and talent, electronic residency. We covered this in more detail in a video that I'll link in the description. To give you an idea, that video is one of the first we ever made on visual politic. Hashtag bring back Simon. At that time, only a few people had applied for this electronic residency. Now, there are more than 70,000 cyber citizens. It may not seem like a big number to you, but remember, the entire physical population of Estonia is 1 million people. And you will say, okay, okay, Grant, so Estonia can be a small Silicon Valley, but how is the quality of life there? To what extent are they sacrificing public services in favor of the economy? Do they have, I don't know, a welfare state? Well, the answer is yes. Like almost all European countries, Estonia has a welfare system, public healthcare, public education, and roads. And not only that, it is an education system which is one of the best in the world. According to the Programme for International Student Assessments report, also known as PISA, Estonia ranks as fifth on the list of countries with the best education, surpassing even Finland. In addition, services such as public transport come at zero cost to citizens. In other words, if you're walking through the streets of Tallinn or Tartu, you can get on a streetcar without having to buy a ticket. You have to buy a ticket? But that's right. Anyway, they're completely free for everyone, which I totally knew I've always bought tickets. And I know what many of you are thinking. Surely Estonia can afford all that because they're super rich, right? Can poorer countries really follow this model? And the truth is that Estonia is far from being a country of millionaires. On the contrary, until the 1990s, they were part of the Soviet Union. Only 30 years ago, this country was not only struggling to catch up with the West, but also lived under the continuous threat of a Russian invasion. They had every chance of ending up as a miniature Ukraine. Today, however, they generate news stories stories like this. Estonia to become the only country in the world with a female president and female prime minister. Invest in Estonia. Hashtag girl bosses. But now, the question is, why are we saying that Estonia has the most efficient tax system in the world, even though it does not have particularly low taxes? How does such a country work? What can other countries learn from Estonia? Today, we're going to answer all of these questions. But first, let's take a look at a little bit of history. The Tiger Leap. Our story begins in 1996. Many of you were already born. Some of you were even dancing to the Spice Girls' fantastic signal, Wannabe, which was then sweeping the developed world. And I totally don't know that from personal experience. At the same time, few of you would have gambled on the future of Estonia. 
In terms of economy, it was a similar level to that of Algeria or Colombia, at least in terms of GDP per capita or purchasing power parity. On top of all this, unemployment was rising and there was a serious brain drain. Think about it. Estonia became independent from the Soviet Union in 1991. Within a few years, they privatised almost all public enterprises and deregulated prices. That meant a lot of unemployed people and a significant rise in prices. And, of course, back then, talking about the internet or new technologies was like talking about a fresh air day in Beijing. And then, that's when this rather dapper gentleman with the fancy bow tie that you see on the screen arrived on the scene. Thomas Hendrik Ilms. At that time, he was the Estonian ambassador to the United States, and he said this. Something that shaped my thinking regarding Estonia. The idea that we should be getting our young people to work with computers. Thomas Hendrik Ilves. And that is how the Tiger Leap strategy was born. Basically, the internet was a revolution in the making. It was still new territory. All countries were just beginning to explore its possibilities. In other words, a young country like Estonia had a window of opportunity to lead the revolution. And boy oh boy, did they do it. From the moment Mr. Elves arrived in the United States with his revolutionary idea, the government prioritised computer use and the internet above all else. Within a few years, all Estonian schools had computers. The government organised all kinds of campaigns to educate citizens in the use of new technologies. In 2005, Estonia was the first country in the world to organise elections with electronic voting. And in 2000, the Estonian parliament recognised internet access as a human right. The fact is that all these policies yielded immediate results. From the first generations of students who studied with computers came the first wave of made in Estonia startups. Do any of you remember Casa? In case you don't, it was one of the first peer-to-peer -peer file sharing programs. Well, it was a product of those early years. Let's all just take a moment to remember all the computers that died because of those programs. But wait a minute, because this was Estonia's first golden era. But if you think the history of this country has always been plain sailing, then you're pretty wrong. Russia accused of unleashing cyber war to disable Estonia, The Guardian. That's right! Estonia has been a pioneer in many things, including being a victim of cyber warfare. The first cyber attack on a state in history took place there in 2007. Remember that, at the time, practically the entire Estonian administration was already digitized. So, for several days, the whole country was paralyzed. We could talk at length about why this attack occurred, but we'll leave that for another video. <clears throat> Russia. Because Estonia's biggest problem came a few years ago. More specifically, with the financial crisis of 2008. If there was one country hit by this crisis, it was Estonia. To give you an idea, that year the GDP of the United States fell by 2.5%. Spain's fell by 3.5%. And remember the impact of that fall. We call it the global financial crisis for a reason. Well in Estonia, the fall in GDP was 14.4%. In other words, the whole country went down the drain. And at that moment of existential crisis, the government was faced with a dilemma. Do we raise taxes? Do we let Europe bail us out? Do we apply extreme austerity policies? In other words, austerity but with capital letters. Well, that's exactly what happened. Happened. From one year to the next, the Estonian government made a small tax cut and a savage reduction in public spending. To give you an idea, 40% of their civil servants were laid off. And you may be thinking, so did this policy work? Well, you can judge that for yourselves. Here, you can see the GDP per capita in parity with purchasing power of Estonia. If you notice, in just 30 years, Estonia has overtaken Greece and Portugal and is catching up with Spain. All this is a real miracle if you consider where everyone was in the 1990s. Today, unemployment in Estonia is less than 6%, and that's including the effects of the pandemic. So the burning question is, how did they do it? What is the magic formula? And is it really enough to embrace technology and the internet to get a country like this? And we're going to look at all of that now. The most competitive tax system in the world. I know what you're all wondering by now. What do we mean when we talk about an efficient tax system? First of all, we're talking about a ranking prepared by Washington-based think tank, the Tax Foundation. Like all rankings, it is highly debatable and should not be taken as holy scripture. But it is important to understand that competitive does not necessarily mean low. In many cases, it's not about how much tax we pay, but how we pay our tax. So what makes Estonia so competitive? The first thing is how simple its tax system is. 
We can sum up almost all taxes in Estonia with one number, 20. 20% 20 income tax, 20% VAT, and 20% corporate tax. Simple and straightforward. In the case of income tax, there are several exemptions for lower incomes. For example, if your salary is less than 6,000 euros per year, which is around $7,200, you pay no tax. The range from 6,000 euros to 25,200 euros has reduced rates. But from 25,200 euros, which is around $32,000, onwards, everyone pays exactly the same. There is no tax benefit whatsoever. In other words, not only is it a simple tax, but it is also neutral. And what do we mean by neutral? Well, it is a tax designed solely to raise revenue. And now you'll say, but wait a minute, are taxes good for anything other than collecting money for the state's coffers? Well, of course they are. In many other countries, such as Spain, taxes reward or punish different decisions. For example, for those of you watching this video from Catalonia, if you invest in growing companies listed on the BME Growth, a Spanish stock market for SMEs, you can deduct up to 10,000 euros, $12,000 on your tax return. Think about it. This measure is incentivizing one type of investment over another. In other words, it could be the case that a person invests in company X before investing in company Y purely for tax reasons. In this case, we are talking about a very non-neutral taxation. In Estonia, however, the tax authorities do not try to promote any particular investment. This has a double advantage. Not only is the system fairer, but it is also much simpler. So simple that filing a tax return in this country takes five minutes. Five minutes. The images you are watching are from an Estonian government tutorial on how to file a tax return. You have the link to the full video in the description. We are talking about a process that literally can be done in 5 minutes and 13 seconds. But undoubtedly, Estonia's super advantage lies in its corporate income tax, a rate of 20%. And you're probably thinking, is that a low tax rate? Not exactly. In Spain, it's between 20 and 25% depending on the size of the company. The Estonian super advantage is how this tax is paid. To begin with, people are only taxed when they take money out of the company. In other words, if you reinvest the profits, you don't pay a cent. In addition, there is no tax on dividends, which avoids double taxation. And above all, Estonian companies can offset losses from previous years against profits from other years. And again, both paying taxes and setting up a company in this country are as easy as setting up an account on Facebook. The images you are seeing now are from another tutorial on how to create companies in Estonia. It takes literally three minutes to do it. And you'll say, okay, this all sounds great. Simple taxes, relatively low rates. What's the catch? What have Estonians sacrificed to have such competitive tax rates? Well, let's take a look. The strategy of zero bureaucracy. The answer is nothing. Estonia has not had to sacrifice its welfare state. They have public health, public education, roads, and public transportation. What's more, as I said before, public transport is free, which I totally knew I always pay for my buses. Of course, they pay for it in the form of taxes, but you can get around the streets of any Estonian city and ride a streetcar without paying a single euro, which is definitely not what I've been doing my whole life. Its education system is among the best in the world, and all of this with a public debt of only 8.4% of GDP. And you'll say, so what is the catch here? Where does Estonia get its money? The answer is efficiency. That is achieving the same result with fewer resources. Remember when I told you that in 2009, Estonia laid off 40% of its workforce? Well, that was the beginning of a revolution. One of those silent revolutions, rarely talked about in the media, but one that we should take note of. In 2013, the new Civil Service Act came into effect. This law said such revolutionary things as that, from that moment on, the hiring policy of civil servants would be decentralised. In other words, it is not the government in Tallinn that decides who is hired or who is fired. It is the tax office in a small town hidden in the Estonian forest that decides whether a certain department can do without a worker or whether they need to hire another. However, even though recruitment is so decentralised, there is an objective imposed by the state, a long-term objective, to ensure that civil servants do not exceed 12% of the workforce. And for that, they have a principle. Zero bureaucracy. So how can bureaucracy be reduced? Well, it turns out in loads of ways. In 2015, the government conducted two surveys. One to the country's business people and another to the civil servants themselves. In that survey, they asked for suggestions on how to reduce red tape. In other words, the civil servants themselves were helping to reduce the weight of the administration. Thanks to this survey, Estonia discovered that the various government agencies were using 14 different accounting software packages. Obviously, this generated a lot of duplication. This is how they came to an agreement and chose a single software. Something similar has been done with the sharing of information. All citizens' tax information is centralized in a single system, which is called XROAD. XROAD connects all government agencies, banks, and all kinds of financial institutions. 
This makes tax fraud detection much more effective. Banks share their customers' tax information with the government. And they do it in real time. Thanks to that, 95% of tax returns are done online with systems as simple as the ones we showed earlier. And instead of needing thousands of people processing invoices or investigating fraud, the same work is done with far fewer staff. But wait a minute, because that is not all. I know what many of you are thinking, especially if you work as civil servants. This is all well and good, but do you really expect all civil servants to dedicate themselves to learning new software programs and new methods every year? This, this is where the continuing education program comes in. Thanks to the surveys I told you about earlier, Estonia realized that training middle management would be enough to change the whole administration. The middle managers are the link between the managers and the rank and file workers. Thanks to all these programs, Estonia has continued to reduce the resources it uses to provide the same public services. To give you an idea, between 2015 and 2017 alone, Estonia reduced its public workforce by 2,300 workers. This may not seem like a big number, but remember we are talking about a country of 1 million inhabitants. To put it in perspective, the entire Estonian administration consists of 116,000 several servants. I know what many of you are thinking. I can already imagine what many of you will say in the comments. Well, that's a bit of a hard solution. Firing civil servants? Nobody likes to be fired. And that's where the advantages of having such a dynamic economy come in. Unemployment in Estonia is less than 6%. In other words, it is really easy to find a job. In fact, it is quite normal for a person to leave the private sector to join a public sector company and vice versa. Of course, this system is not perfect and Estonia has many challenges ahead, mainly integrating its Russian minority and addressing the wage gap, which is still one of the highest in Europe. However, objectively, it is a country model that we should keep in mind. They have shown that, with good policies, having a welfare state is compatible with low taxes and economic growth. In fact, in terms of income equality, Estonia is more equal than many countries with higher taxes, such as Spain, Italy or the United Kingdom. So now the question is over to you. Do you think that some things could be imported from the Estonian model to your country? Can you think of any specific aspect in which the administration of your country could be improved? And just for talking sake, what do you think 30 years of unpaid public transport fees would be? Leave your answers in the comments below. As always, don't forget that here on Visual Politic we have new videos every week. So subscribe to the channel, hit like and the little bell icon so you don't miss any of our updates. And as always, I'll see you next time. And if you want to learn more about politics and hear even more of my lovely voice, you can join us at Reconsider Media. We have a podcast at reconsidermedia.com slash podcast. See you there.